Hey, friend, Chris Vandiver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today's video is going to be a doozy, and that's because we're going to dig into take folders, one of Logic's crown jewel features. It's kind of criminal that I've never covered this in like the two years I've been running the website and channel. So we're going to end that right now. We're going to take care of take folders. We're going to deep dive into what it takes to use take folders so you can feel confident as you're recording your own Logic projects. Now, I think most of us are pretty familiar with what a take folder is, but if you're not, essentially, let's say you're recording some vocals. You're ready to record the verse or the chorus or whatever. So you, you hit record, you record that verse, and you say, okay, that was pretty good. Let's try it again. And then you record that same verse about three or four times. Now you have a series of different takes. And the beauty of digital audio is that we're able to take little pieces of different takes and create one ultimate take that we call a comp. Now, Logic's way of managing takes is through take folders. And I think this is just about the best system for editing different takes. It's an expandable and collapsible folder so we can open it up when we need to see the different takes that we've recorded, but collapse it when we don't need to take up all of that real estate when we're not editing the different takes. So as you can see here in this vocal take folder, I have takes from take one up to take 11. And I've selected certain bits and pieces of the different takes to create one ultimate take or our comp. Now Logic also has track alternatives, which is a pretty new feature. And that's something similar to like Pro Tools playlist system. I won't dig into that today, but I do promise that I will cover track alternatives sometime in the future. So what makes take folders so amazing is the feature of quick swipe comping. It's very simple. We don't have to dice up different regions. We don't have to add crossfades. We don't have to like do a lot of labor to create our ultimate take. So for example, let's just go down here and let's say that I really like this section of the vocals. Well, all I have to do is hover my mouse over the top half of the region, click and drag across. And just like that, we've selected that section of the vocals. It's been promoted to our comp track, which is the very top level of the take folder system. And you can see that we don't have to mess around with crossfades at all. These crossfades are automatically applied to the comp. So we've saved so much effort just by using quick swipe comping. We can also select this part of the region and we can even adjust the borders of this section by hovering our mouse on the left and right edges of this section. So click and just drag and we can you know, expand it across. Same thing back here. And then let's say that I actually like this part of take two or I just wanna audition take two. Well, if I hover my mouse right over the top half and click, now that section has been changed to take two's version. So it's very easy to just check through different takes very quickly of a single line, a single phrase, a single word. Really helpful. We can also move this section and maintain the edges of the boundary. So if we hover our mouse again in the upper half, you get this like sort of double arrow thing. And if I click and drag, just like that. For most of us, that's about the extent of what we need from take folders. We just need to be able to quickly select sections that we want be able to adjust the boundaries, you know, be able to audition different takes of that same word or phrase. Super easy, super helpful. But take folders also have a second mode, which is for editing purposes and not necessarily quick swipe comping. So let's kind of zoom out here. And you see here, we have this button, which tells us that we're in quick swipe comping mode. If we click on it, we now have a pair of scissors, which tells us that we're in editing mode, which essentially means that we now have the ability to use our pointer tool instead of the quick swipe comping tool. Let's say that take nine here, yeah, it was pretty good down here, but maybe we feel it's better later in the song. Well, in editing mode, we can now click and hold take nine and then bring it way down here and move it right along the timeline within the take folder. We can even go beyond the boundaries of the take folder and the take folder extends its boundaries. We can even move take nine up to take 10's track lane. Very simple. And we can also cut out bits and pieces so I'll use my marquee tool, click on it to separate the latter half of take nine from the rest of it and move that around and move it up and down. We can also adjust the boundaries of each take region. So if I just hover my mouse in the bottom left and right hand corners, we can adjust the region edge, bring it back out. If I decide to chop this portion and move it, so let's move it down. I can then bring this edge right back out like you can with any other region. I know when I first got started with take folders, I was always very nervous to adjust anything in a take folder. Just like, ah, uh, don't chop anything up, don't do anything. But 
it's really not that big a deal. You can pull and stretch anything you want. You can revert back to what you need very easily. We can even slice and dice the whole take folder entirely. So I just split using the playhead. Really simple. So, so far, I think take folders is pretty cut and dry, right? You're able to edit within them. You're able to pick the different takes that you want. One feature that blew my mind, and I'm going to be honest, it was not too long ago that it blew my mind. I didn't even know this existed, is that you're able to actually preserve this top level comp. So if you end up recording new takes, you don't end up losing the comp that you've cobbled together. So let me show you. So we can see in this particular region here that I have made all of these comp edits, right? We can see all the slices. Perfect. So let's say that I love this comp, but we are going to continue recording new sections. But I want to preserve this comp just so I don't lose it when we record new sections. And then I got to like recomp it. In that case, I would click on the A or B or whatever letter or number you see right there. This indicates to us which comp that we're dealing with and which take. So right now we're on comp A. This is the comp that I've created. Let's duplicate that comp. Okay, now we have a B. We can also switch between different takes. So take one take two, but check it out. We now have comp A preserved, comp B. Let's say I wanna make some adjustments. So we're gonna pick this take and we'll pick part of that take and we'll pick part of that take. Okay, so now we've made some adjustments, right? If I switch back to comp A, we're right back to our ultimate comp that we had previously. Such a time saver. So we can also switch back to comp B and if comp B is feeling pretty good, we can then duplicate that comp as well. Really, really helpful. We can also use flex time within take folders. So if I enable flex time and let's just set it to monophonic and it takes a minute to analyze, we can see here we now have access to flex time edits. It's worth pointing out though, let's uh let me turn off flex time here. Let me select this part and this part here. Okay. So let's say I want to make an adjustment to the timing of this word. So I add flex edit, and I stretch this way out. You can see that the time compression and expansion is being affected on this particular region, but it's not at all being affected on this other region. So if I squanch it up a bit here, take a look. So we're able to make flex time adjustments. It doesn't impact other regions, just like in a normal project, but we're able to make all these edits within a take folder. We don't have to do anything like bouncing tracks in place to then do the edits that we need Flex time can be used within a take folder. We can slice and dice within a take folder. It's really helpful. But at a certain point, you may come to the decision that, yeah, you want to commit to this comp. You've picked your favorite pieces of the different takes. You've made some flex time edits. Well, we have a couple different options. You could bounce in place. So you can go to file, go to bounce, and go to tracks or region in place. That's fine. We can also click on that letter right in the take folder here. And we have different options. We could either flatten. So we should actually have this open. Let me flatten this so you can see what's going on. So now our comp, all those different pieces that we picked out, we now have removed the take folder and what we're left with are regions of those different bits and pieces with the crossfades. So this is a quick, easy way to just like get right to it, you know, get rid of the take folder. I personally like to hold on to take folders. I like to hold on to previous iterations and not make any sort of destructive decision just in case I got to go back. So instead we could go right down here and we can flatten and merge. Now Logic has created a brand new audio file. It's compiled the different parts of our comp, bounced in place, so we have a single audio file. We're not dealing with multiple regions. We can also export the active comp to a new track. So you can see down here that our comp is just now on its own new track, but it hasn't replaced the take folder. So if I kind of back up here, you can see we've created it. Awesome. Another option, is we have the ability to move the active comp to a new track. So watch this. We can see that some changes have occurred in our take folder. Let me back up. What's going on is, is those pieces of the comp that we chose are the best bits are actually taken out of the take folder. Typically not something I would be into, but I can imagine there's a purpose for some people. Lastly, 
Sometimes we need to kind of like deconstruct a take folder. Maybe you've recorded a bunch of takes of a line or a particular noise or percussion, and you love those sounds, but you don't necessarily need them in a take folder. You'd actually like to use all of those different regions in different parts of the song or all together, like collectively, so you have one, you know, amazing section. So last bit here is that you can unpack tape folders if you need to. So all these different regions that are sitting inside of this folder can actually be removed from the folder on their own track lanes. So let's start with unpack here. We can see that the composite take is the first track lane in our project. All of the subsequent different takes are on their own track lanes as well, including the comps that we had. So remember, we had comp A and comp B. We also have those on their own track lanes as well. They're all muted, so only our main comp track that we were very happy with is active and we can hear it. Now let's also select all of these track lanes and go into the mixer. If you take a look, there is no extra channel strips for these different track lanes, and that's because they're all operating on the same channel strip with the same effects. So this is kind of a nice way to be able to unpack a take folder, but without your mixer getting too crazy in the process. Okay, let's now examine a different option. We can unpack to new tracks. Okay, check it out. So once again, we have our top comp. We also have all the different takes and the two different comps that were living inside of the take folder. So if we select all of these track lanes now and go into the mixer, you can see there are channel strips for each one of these different takes and comps with the plugins and they're not muted. Okay, that's another option. And then lastly, we can unpack to new track alternatives. Now again, we're not gonna dig too much into this, but let's just do it. Okay, we can see that our comp is here. It's all set, ready to go. But where did the rest of the regions go? So let's right click on the track header and go right down to configure track header. And you can enable track alternatives. You can now see that there's a letter next to the name in the track header. And if I click on these double arrows, we have all our different regions or different takes. They're just living in a different system. So let's show inactive takes. And just like that, we now have track alternatives where we can select different takes to listen to those in context. We can even promote this particular take to the top level. Again, I'm not gonna dig too much into track alternatives, but that's another option for kind of unpacking everything you have in a take folder. So I hope you can see there's so much versatility in take folders in Logic. Quick swipe comping is such an easy process. We're able to just quickly pick the different pieces of different takes that we love and create our ultimate take. We're able to edit within a take folder. We're able to use flex time. We're able to move regions around. So much versatility. And then we can even unpack those take folders if we deem it necessary. So I know this was a doozy. I hope it was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week, posting new videos, new emails, new posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.